to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Tuesday. It is not Monday. It is Tuesday. And I know that because I have a little cheat sheet in front of me. And going back about a year, I used to just randomly say days. Now it's right there. It says Tuesday. It's, already, it's automatic. I know it's Tuesday. I don't mess that up anymore. That's one less thing I mess up with this stinking show. Welcome to The Closing Beat, a quick, fun show that we do to talk about the stock market, the good, the bad, and the ugly that happened on the day. It was a day where there was a lot of good, not so much ugly, but some bad. Uh, and we'll go over it, of course. We try to teach you something as well. We are teaching advisors here. So if your financial advisor is not helping you out, not teaching you, I hope you'll check us out there at that fancy page and uh, give us a shot. Hope you'll uh, keep us in mind. If not, maybe you'll play a game. It's called Guess the Dow. Uh, no strings attached. You're welcome to play a game. Go to the website in the bottom right-hand corner of your page at, or screen. And you will, you could take a shot. Uh, we will announce the winners on Friday. We'll give you a hundred dollar gift card if you're not one of our customers, and a, credit your account a hundred dollars if you are one of our customers. Our jazz artist of the week in this holiday shortened week, which maybe we should extend for her, because this this is the artist here, Billie Holiday. We're going with Billie Holiday this week, and uh, "Summertime" is always the first song that I think of. Uh, when I was younger, uh, we used to play the record. It's actually uh, you could see it. It's uh, over there, right about, that's really weird. It's right up there, the Porgy and Bess album. I used to play the actual record for my daughter when she would go to sleep and she would yell at me from the room in her bunk bed, play uh, Summertime. Uh, so uh, enjoy a little Billie Holiday if you're uh, a bit of a jazz fan or looking for something like that tonight. All right, let's get started with the markets here. Uh, no time to waste today. No time to waste. Let's just dive into it. Uh, you got the Dow higher by 2%, 1.23% on the S&P, and uh, just a tiny little gain on the NASDAQ. There's a discrepancy there. Anytime there's a discrepancy, you want to check it out, see what's going on. We will, of course, cover that. Let's take a look at the stock market here. I'll start with the Russell. That was your strongest of the market today. It's now been over 33 days since the S&P was the best performing index uh, out of the major four. Uh, here's the Russell. It was the best... Uh, obviously the strongest on the day, adding about 3%. Uh, that's going to be because of your consumer discretionary stocks, your risk-based stocks, really. I mean, people were taking risk on some serious names here. I mean, like Party City. Party City up 25% today, essentially no longer a company. People were willing to give that one a shot. Um, you know, I so that tells you a little bit about the risk sentiment that's out there today. Uh, Tupperware up 26%. They're actually trying to rework their deal uh, with the bondholders there uh, and pay them less than what they were entitled to. And well, people like that for the stock in general. And you had GNC where you go get your vitamins and whatnot up 27% on the day. These are all really, really weak stocks. And in the Russell 2000, they saw quite a bid today, very sizable volume. Uh, so in the Russell 2000, at least it gives you an idea of the type of risk people were willing to take. This was not just a general market rally. This was people saying, Saying, I, this is going to recover. I'm taking serious risk. So that's what you have there. Uh, the NASDAQ was the weakest out of the group. It pretty much just faded away throughout the day. It had a couple real significant sell-offs throughout the day, which we can highlight by looking at like a five-minute chart if you're interested. First sell-off came right after the open, a little bit of a waterfall drop, temporary recover, and then the rest of the day it spent selling off, almost going negative a couple times, but it did close at least in the positive. Uh, that's going to be largely due to uh, weakness in your tech area and biotech. Those saw some weakness. Otherwise, would had been strong names. Uh, now, we had a lot of good news out there today. We had new home sales uh, better than expected. Consumer confidence came in lower, but uh, optimism in the short term is where the excitement was. Anytime they do the consumer confidence numbers, they say, uh, when they interview these people, they say, do you feel more optimistic about the short term? And if so, how much? And what about the long term? And so they measure them in two different categories. And so although the numbers came in as a whole uh, down, people were more optimistic about the short term as the economy kind of gets what opening back up. Uh, as far as the markets today, uh, did you notice the financials there? Look how much easier the market can rally if the financials happen to play along. We'll cover the sector here in just a second. But here's the S&P 500 back to the 200-day uh, moving average, just under the 3,000 level that everybody's watching at. Um, in the S&P today, there was uh, one, uh, one third of the S&P gained over 5%, meaning there one third of all stocks in the S&P added 5% or more. That's impressive. That doesn't happen all the time. And over two thirds of the S&P added over uh, 2%. So really strong day out there. Uh, if you happen to catch our video tomorrow, uh, the FinTips video, we're going to cover the probabilities of the Russell 2000 having these extreme moves. Well, today would be a great example for that to actually see the Russell 2000 up over 3%. Uh, how often does that happen? And should we expect things like that to continue if they do? That'll be tomorrow's video for uh, FinTips for you there. Uh, like I said, you had a little bit of, of selling in the NASDAQ throughout the day and in the S&P 500, a little late day selling. Uh, mo this right here, right towards the end of the day there, last hour, a uh, bit of aggressive selling, 
the best I can give you is Bloomberg came out with a story, said that the White House was considering sanctions against China for that Hong Kong drama that they're trying to pull over there. And so uh, that's obviously stepping in the way of their country and all this stuff. So that was one of the, that's the only reason I could see. That was the only news that really came out there. Uh, because of that, it leaves the, the, S&P 500 under the 200-day moving average, and in our notes from Jazz email this weekend that I sent out to clients, we talked about how just getting above it doesn't do the trick. That's not going to convince anybody. Multiple days above the 200-day moving average, we'll start to let the bears kind of look at this and say, all right, maybe I should jump in with some part of my position or something, right? If you're not in the market or you've been waiting for a pullback, maybe this is uh, what will convince you to get in. You'll be sort of forced to get in rather than wanting to get in on a pullback. Um, so we'll see. Uh, today we closed underneath it. We need to see, a, uh, they call it above the 200 day moving average on a closing basis. That's kind of the fancy way to say it if I were to ever be on TV and try to make my way through that mess. Uh, anyways, uh, JP Morgan uh, had a lot of positive things to say today. However, one of the negative ones was uh, that they think retail investors should not, quote, overstay their welcome, that this market rally will peter out. Those were their words, not mine. And uh, they predicted over the summer the stock market's actually going to start to peter out. Like this rally's going to slow down. We can kind of already see that it has. I mean, over the last couple months, we haven't really achieved a whole lot. We're just slightly higher than where we were just a month ago, uh, just under a month ago. So it gives you an idea that today was exciting, but it really didn't do a whole lot considering where we've been. Uh, it would be better if we were kicking off some new rally or we were like taking a break and then blasting off into this new rally, but it's too early. We, we don't really, uh, we don't have anything to offer there just yet. All right, uh, we've been talking about Turnaround Tuesday here. We're actually going to go and talk about the NASDAQ Turnaround Tuesdays because obviously today is Tuesday. It was a great day. To this data you see on the screen does not include today's uh, data because it would have been it would have skewed the numbers, so uh, we didn't include it. But uh, here is the average gain on the NASDAQ per day of the week so far this year. So Mondays average a slight down move. Tuesdays average that Turnaround Tuesday you're used to seeing. Wednesdays, obviously a small gain. Uh, Thursday and Friday, small down moves at least so far this year. It's not a large data set, but that's what you have at least going forward. Uh, we talked about this in the past where the S&P 500 had been losing some of its excitement on these turnaround Tuesdays. Uh, this was the last time we did it. Average return uh, by day on the S&P 500. This has definitely changed since then, but I just want to show you kind of if you just join us for the first time why we're looking at this. Anyways, taking a look at the NASDAQ there, you can see turnaround Tuesday in full effect there uh, for the NASDAQ 100. Today it almost you know, started to skew that number a little bit, how it was fading away. Uh, all right, you've got the, um, our FinTips video. I mentioned the Russell 2000. Uh, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Friday, we're going to talk about Roth conversions and some tax arbitrage maybe on, on our FinTips videos if you're interested in that. And on our Outside the Virus show, we're now calling it the uh, Dough Show. We're bringing that back. We're going to talk about anything that affects your dough, but we're going to do it by day. So Mon Monday will be Money Monday. Tuesday will be Trading Tuesday. So today's video was focused on a very specific trade that's not a recommendation. It was just an idea how to think about something, a uh, stock that's reporting earnings that you may want to buy. Uh, so we went over an exact specific trade on Autodesk, if you're interested in taking a look at that. A little bit geeky, but I thought I'd just come out swinging, you know? Just give you the guys the good stuff from the start, and then if it scares you, we can back off from there. Uh, but anyways, that one was that. Uh, tomorrow will be Wealth Wednesday, so we'll be covering things that affect your wealth. Let's start with the uh, sector breakdown. Let's go through it here. All but two sectors were higher on the day. Six sectors were higher by 1% or more. Again, the financials steal the headlines today. They get the show. They get all the attention. 5% gain. Best day it's had this month by far uh, with, with the gain that it had. Still in a choppy area here. The financials uh, itching to get out of that. You can kind of feel it. You can see the individual stocks helping out. Some of the individual stocks that helped out today would be J.P. Morgan in the news, of course, 7% doesn't help me now, but 7% higher on the day, uh, much heavier volume. You had Bank of America getting a lot of volume as well. That stock was higher by 7% as well. And Berkshire Hathaway, which had been sort of slacking behind just a little bit, uh, back to the 50-day moving average with a 3% gain. On the downside, well, it's not really on the downside, but some of the, uh, I mean, it finished a little lower, but uh, healthcare continues to chop around. Healthcare was the leader, remember, through a lot of this most recent rally. You had tech and healthcare. Uh, now, uh, healthcare's taking a break. You got people essentially saying, that's enough. I don't want to pay over highs. Why should the uh, healthcare sector be at new highs when the economy is still 
mostly partly shut down, right? Uh, so you got a bit of chop here in the healthcare sector. That's uh, probably okay in the short term. Uh, you had some outperformance today from Algin, up almost 2% on the day, although it did fade uh, throughout the day. Uh, Humana sitting at new highs. This is also one of the stronger stocks in general out of the group. And Abvi, of course, one of the stronger ones sitting near highs as well. They all kind of pulled back throughout the day. That's what helped hurt the NASDAQ 100, if you happen to be taking a look there. Uh, oops, transports. Transport's higher by 5% on the day. Airlines and rails were the leaders. You have uh, massive double-digit gains from the airlines. United Airlines up 16%. American Airlines up 14, almost 15% on the day. JetBlue, another one of the standouts there with a 15% gain. All of these were over 20% at one point throughout the day. Uh, notable mention, Avis? Car rental company, double digits, was the only other stock in the transportation category uh, in uh, sector to or industry to um, have a double digit gain aside from the airlines. Uh, maybe the lack of competition from Hertz, because Hertz is filing for bankruptcy. That stock down to 56 cents today. Ouch. That one doesn't look good there. Uh, I'll also point out Jets. I know you guys seem to talk about this one a lot. Did a video on it, but uh, Jets up 11% on the day. This is the airline based ETF, the most popular one, anyways. You got tech stocks, uh, the XLK, if you want to look at that, faded away throughout the day. This was where your weakness was. This is kind of what uh, didn't help today overall. The excitement was all with the financials uh, there. And a lot of the action was uh, Apple. So take a look at this. Apple on a five minute chart started off the day by just selling off. Look at these waterfall drops throughout the day. Every one of these bars represents five minutes worth of time period today. And this is where we started the day. So uh, Apple was showing from the beginning this, the weakness there, which was pulling down your tech stocks. And then Microsoft, the other one, did nothing but sell off all day. Very light little bounce over lunch, but Microsoft and Apple holding things back. Why is that a problem? Well. If we look at the tech, e oops, nope, nope. If we look at the tech ETF, uh, Apple and Microsoft make up 40% of the XLK that you're seeing on the screen right there. Uh, if we go to consumer, I'm sorry, uh, communication services, slight gain on the day. This is the definition of a V-shaped recovery here. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, a lot of the excitement came from Facebook hitting new 52-week highs. It's extended. Right, it's extended in the short term. Look what happened last time it got extended, just a temporary pullback. You got people already starting to anticipate that uh, at least a little bit. Over to commodities, you got oil just a touch higher on the day, basically flat for the last four days, but still higher to, to the highs of the last couple of days. Added 3.3% up to 34.36 a barrel. If we go over and look at gold, gold in this uh, sort of range here, you're okay with a pullback here. Anybody that likes gold, you've been waiting for the pullback, you're getting it. Gold down on the day by 1.7% to $1,750. $5 an ounce for gold if you like buying that precious metal there. Let's take a look at the sectors over the 50-day moving average here. Just put this together last minute. Uh, this is a the percentage of stocks uh, over their 50-day moving average by sector. So we just broke it down by sector there. It's so one way to identify an intermediate term type strength. The 50-day moving average is largely seen as an intermediate term uh, trend indicator, right? So if stocks are above it, things are looking good. So here we break it down here. You got four sectors uh, that are uh, over 90%, consumer discretionary, healthcare, tech, and energy. You have six total sectors that are outperforming the S&P 500 in terms of stocks that are above the 50-day. The blue is the S&P 500. And lastly, at the bottom there, you've got the handful of sectors. These are mostly um, interest rate sensitive or defensive type areas there. Uh, real estate, obviously, interest rate sensitive. Utilities and consumer staples is a defensive sector, if you happen to uh, just be joining us and learn a little bit there. So we thought we'd break that down for you. All right, let's do sort of our technical breakdown. 13 new highs on the day, a lot of familiar names. You got Chipotle uh, did hit new 52 week highs. And by the way, all the stocks I'm going to go through here, they all reversed, right? There's only a couple that didn't reverse on the day, but uh, Chipotle up there, Carrier, uh, Air Condition, is on the list again, and eBay, once again, they all did pull back. In fact, every stock on the new high list pulled back except for, uh, really, Old Dominion, which held its own today. That's a transportation company, up 3.4%. You've seen the trucks. And Rockwell Automation, new 52-week highs as well, kind of moving outside of a real congestion area uh, overhead, right? So a nice little breakout for them and not too extended in the short term. You had zero new 52 week lows and that's been a trend. No 52 week lows. Everything's coming off those lows. The record was 336, which was set back in March 
uh, 13th of this year. Uh, so we haven't seen that. As for some technical patterns you might be interested in, you've got XOP hinting at a little bit of a breakout. It loses a point because it's in a downtrend. You like to see this consolidation in the middle of an uptrend like a Rockwell Collins, uh, but uh, the XOP moving sideways right here nice and tight. Series of higher lows as the 20 period moving average helps it out. So you got a little bit of a, hopefully a little bit of uh, room to run over 56. Maybe it gets back to the 200 day moving average. Risk to reward is there. That's important because you don't see that a lot. Uh, you got 56 basically to say 70, all right? And maybe if you get lucky a little bit further, you use some price resistance around 74, not anytime soon, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, moving above those highs, you have a reason to say, well, it's worth the risk. If I have to take a loss, I take a loss around 44, 43, something like that, but I'm getting the, the opportunity for about a two for one trade here, or if you're looking at it that way, it's not a suggestion, I, I have to say that. Limited brands hinting at uh, attracting some short traders here. This last move over the past couple days takes it back to the 200 day moving average, takes it back to price resistance if you follow technical patterns, and takes you back to 50% of the distance between the highs and the lows. So whether you're a Fibonacci trader, a moving average trader, a price resistance trader, all those people are gonna start looking at limited brands for signs of weakness for a potential short. Uh, not my opinion, that's just the different strategies out there. Uh, Win Resorts also looking about the same thing as XOP. There's one problem with this one though. See how you look at something like this and you say, all right, maybe, maybe I'll take a shot. This thing can clear a known area of having some problems here. So we're having some troubles here, right? It's just unable to get above that. We've got a little bit of a range working here. If we can get above the 87 area, maybe that's something I can get excited about. Put my, my you know, loss area down here around 72. The problem is risk to reward. And this is, this is really the problem with a lot of stocks right now. If it does break out above this area, where's the next place it stops? Likely up here around 100 bucks. So you're looking to play from like 86, 87 to 100 bucks, but you've got to risk about the same amount. So it's a one for one trade. You could do those every once in a while, but if you try to make a living risking one to make one, meaning you're willing to risk as much as you're willing to gain, uh, you better be highly accurate, right? 50-50 accuracy won't do the trick there. So kind of, I don't know if that's a lesson or whatever. Uh, following up with our, you know, that's our Trading Tuesday talk right there, huh? Uh, Boeing, also uh, maybe an idea here, gaining a little bit more attention as it starts to move out of this downtrend. People like this sort of thing. See what happens when it breaks this downtrend? People get excited, you got a little extra volume and people start to assume that the bottom is in. Risk to reward is under this low here, so you say about 112 bucks. I'm looking for, if you're looking for this move or wanting to participate in there somewhere. I know a lot of you have Boeing, so you're looking for this thing to just wake up and get back to work. Uh, uh, so maybe that's something to consider. However, it's not as strong. You're not picking on a pullback inside of an uptrend. You're picking on a pullback inside of a pretty nasty downtrend. So it loses a point for that. If you find something else that's pulling back inside of an uptrend and then breaks through, okay, maybe that's something you want to look at instead. All right. Let me know in the comments uh, below how you think about things like that. It takes a little extra time to put that stuff together, but I think some of you really look forward to that. Uh, Southwest Airlines is a stock that was in the news today, up 12%. Of course, all the airlines were higher today. UBS upgraded the stock. They said they see signs of improvement in traffic, and this stock has a clean balance sheet. Now they got a lot of money now. Uh, they got a clean balance sheet, so if by chance there's another flare-up of the COVID-19 virus, then uh, they should be able to be just fine. They can scale back no problem, get back to kind of hunkering down, and there should be no problem. Uh, and so there you have it. A couple other stocks in the news. AutoZone. Uh, we talked about AutoZone last week there, uh, beat on earnings, revenues came in as expected. They did remove their guidance like most companies out there. That wasn't any real new news. Uh, Dropbox, higher by 5.7% today, been an outperformer of late. Uh, Barron's said that this stock's price has not benefited yet from this cloud-based rally, right? The stay-at-home cloud-based rally. Oh my gosh, what am I going to use for my streaming service? What am I going to use for my storage service? What's my company going to allow me to use? Well, a lot of people are using Dropbox or simply Box. And so uh, Barron said the price doesn't reflect that just yet. They think it's moving higher. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Molson Coors, by the way, is going to be issuing, uh, no, I'm sorry, they're uh, cutting their dividend. Uh, was that today? Yeah, Molson Coors is cutting their dividend uh, as well. So yet another stock uh, cutting their dividend. As far as earnings go tomorrow, you got Carnival, uh, uh, Ralph Lauren, U-Haul, Autodesk, which on the uh, Doe Show today, we covered uh, the trade on Autodesk. So we'll follow up with that. Let's see what happens on Autodesk tomorrow. It finished basically right where we, when we were talking about it. Uh, so I'll give you something to kind of look at. You have uh, Box, 
reporting earnings. There you go. Uh, Hewlett Packard, Network Appliances, NTAP is a symbol. Uh, PVH, that's Calvin Klein, Toll Brothers, and Workday reporting earnings. And one last thing before I answer your questions here. Take a look at this. The government has been handing out a ton of money. As I joke in the text below, they've done everything short but throw them from helicopters, right? Money is just coming out to everybody, every business. They're willing, they might be doing another stimulus package. It's all out there. So the supply of money is growing, meaning there's more money to be had out there. Uh, we're using the M2 money supply here. That's like your savings accounts, money market funds, money market ETFs, short-term savings type things. However, if you look at the chart below that, we're not spending money, at least as of late. Uh, we tend to be saving money. I think what's happening is you have a lot of people that go, holy cow, I had some savings, but not nearly enough. If I can get my hands on some dough, I'm gonna save up a little bit more instead of going wild with it and buying a new truck or something, right? So what happens here? More money out there, which is supposed to spur growth. You're supposed to go spend your money. You're supposed to go buy stuff or pay your bills or back bills and all that stuff. But instead, you're mostly saving your money. Come on, fess up. Who is it? Who's out there? Who's saving their money? So what's happening is it's backfiring on the Fed in the short term. At least the data shows that, that the Fed wanted you to go spend money, the economy can start growing, we can dig our way out of this mess. However, you're saving your money. So what does that mean? That means uh, basically uh, old Uncle Jerome Powell out there uh, is gonna have to consider negative rates, right? Because if you're hanging on to your money and you're satisfied making 0.2% on your money just for the sake of having money if this thing gets out of control, that's one thing. But if the rates go negative and now you have to pay to keep your money, then he's essentially gonna force you to go spend your money. So if you like the idea of negative rates, then you like that data that's on the screen there. If you don't like that, then uh, go spend your money. <laughs> go spend it somewhere. Do something with it, because otherwise it'll... Uh, Mr. Powell is going to come after you, make you go force, uh, go spend your money. Anyways, I will stop there and uh, see if I can answer your questions. I'll do my best here if I can, uh, if I can read the screen. It's a little bit weird. There you go. Um, Uh-oh, bought a new truck. <laughs> Save your money, keep your job. Some of you are hell-bent. You're like, fine, I'll pay a quarter percent to keep my money in the bank. I'm not spending it. I uh, see what you're doing there. We did a class on that for customers about Denmark and Finland and how things are going over there, how it affect their money and what tricks people are using, even in Japan, how they're going about it. Uh, anyways, yep. You like the idea of some energy there? It has been uh, recovering quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's been a more active sector there. I give you that. Yeah. Should have done the payroll tax instead. I agree. It should have been part of it. Didn't need to be all of it, but it should have been part of it. I got to tell you. There's a reason why there's an empty chair over there. I'm willing to fill it. Cut them payroll taxes. Give me a year. Just, just give me a year with like half the payroll taxes. I don't even need you to cut them all together. Yeah, I don't know. Wishful thinking, huh? Although I hear President Trump's open to ideas. I suppose that you could just call him up, tell him what you think. I don't know. Maybe see what I can do. Uh, AT&T has been hanging on and uh, saw a bit of spark today. Yeah, basically everything. If you had a stock today that didn't perk up at least a little bit, assuming it's not like an inverse leverage ETF, then uh, good. I mean, that's, it, it should do that. If you didn't see something perk up, okay, you got to question what you're doing there. Luck and coffee. It's a lottery ticket. I'm going to keep those comments there. I see it bounced a little bit. Uh, it's a lot. Did it? Was it open today? That was open, yeah. Um, that's a lottery ticket, whether it makes it or not. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't, I, your best guess is as good as mine. That's why I call it a lottery ticket there. Yep. What are your thoughts on a square root shaped recovery? I like how they said that. I can, you can imagine that and uh, the odds right now are pointing to that. So what they mean is basically a square root, draw a square root sign on a chart. You got your drop, you got a rally and then a sideways move for a while. Um, I think that's highly, highly possible. It doesn't look like that in the short term because you see day to day, you're like, yay, today was a good day. However, as you zoom out and more data fills the screen, you see like right now could be the beginning of the top of the root, you know? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, all those. Uh, the question is on Raytheon Tech. Raytheon Tech, uh, Carrier, Otis, United Technology. Well, no, Raytheon. Uh, they just, you know, waking up, right? Obviously, their spinoff stocks have done much better, and that's because they're working on getting to their valuation, I think. Yeah. Uh, how should you prepare a portfolio if the U.S. becomes Japan? I don't think they'll become Japan. Uh, maybe some of the other countries there, but uh, yeah, we, we did that in a whole class, went over not only your investments,
but we went over savings, credit cards, mortgages, all that stuff, just to get ahead of it a little bit. Um, you're, it's gonna for, if we go negative on rates, it's gonna force people once and for all to pay attention to their dollars. Hey, you know, you guys all know people that don't watch the markets. You know people that don't really pay attention to their savings accounts or you ask them how much they have on a credit card and they're like, I don't know, roughly 2,000 or something. Like they don't know. Uh, it's gonna force you to pay attention. If you don't pay attention, it's gonna be costing you daily. Yep. I love it. I love it, I love it. Uh, we'll see what happens. Thoughts on Genesis. Genesis Healthcare, uh, that's got to be news driven there. Something with the virus there. That, that's the kind of stock. When something like that happens, run. Take the money and run. I'll always have that comment, by the way. Um, halted a couple times. Earnings related there. Yeah, anytime a stock just doubles like that, if you have it, own it, recently bought it, been trying to get out of it, that's your gift. You used to call that a gift. Yep. Uh, wow, staying with the same sort of ticker symbol there. Seattle Genetics, obviously a very strong stock. You like that it's pulling back. Uh, if you are looking to buy it, then today was good. Biotech in general was weak overall, so there's nothing wrong with this stock on a day-to-day -day basis. You just say, well, everything pulled back a little bit in that space. Um, Mostly positive ratings on the stock there, mostly higher pr price targets, 185-ish, uh, somewhere in there. I think you just like the stock to pull back, see if you can buy it cheaper. I don't know anything else about the company, by the way, in terms of uh, recent research. Yeah. Um, yeah, I look forward to that. Sending some astronauts to space, that is cool. I was one of those kids that was fascinated by that. Never went to go see a launch, but and I hear they're not, they don't even want you to come see this one. You don't have to get close, I guess, but awesome. I hope that goes well for them. Yeah, been over a decade. Uh, hey, Dustin, what, do I, what if my job just recently stopped the 401k match? Uh, do you continue to participate? You got some considerations there, right? If you need to keep your taxable income lower, then you got to use the vehicle, right? There's something to use because you can't use a traditional IRA or you're not going to get the uh, credit anyways, or you're not going to get to lower, use the write-off. Um, I don't know why I can't say that. Anyways, uh, if you've been thinking about doing a Roth IRA and it doesn't affect your income too much by stopping contributions, that's a consideration. Look at where your income is at, add back your 401k contributions and see where that puts you, your taxable income. Uh, there's a lot of variables there, right? If your income is too high and you add back the contributions for the 401k, then you could likely not even qualify for a Roth. So it, there's no real simple general answer there uh, in, in those terms, right? Just because I'd have to know who you are and kind of where you're at there. Uh, but it, it is a consideration. I'm getting that question a lot from customers. Like, hey, run my numbers. Where do I put the dollars or do I stick with it? Yep. Uh, what do you think of Nextera? Sideways money. Uh, there's a lot of this in this space right now. I get the attraction to the stock, but it's sideways money. You're, you're, you'd be buying or selling a stock for no good reason. So if you owned it, you're selling it because you got bored. If you buy it, you're just volunteering to buy a quiet stock at the moment with no hint of moving higher or lower. So I would, I would wait. I would wait. Consider waiting. What happened to Shopify today? I'm going to assume that was a little bit of profit taking there. The stock is extremely overbought in the short term. So to see it pull back a little bit, it's a good thing, right? You got people, everybody in this stock has a nice profit at this point, unless you bought it this morning. And so you have people saying, okay, enough's enough. I'll take my money and run. I'll take money out of one stock and go spread it out over more risk. It was a real risk on type day. So that could be it. Uh, there was nothing, uh, no news driven uh, event or anything like that. Just profit taking, I would assume. Yep. Uh, you want to cut your losses on Facebook. You've got the 232, 235. Uh, you're thinking about waiting to see if it bounces. You're long the call spreads, I take it, or you're long that call spread. Um, that's, that's flirting with, uh, I mean, you're asking an extended stock to become even more extended, and uh, I didn't see a expiration on there, so. If, you, if you're like end of the week, then chances are it's not worth anything anyways, just hang on. Uh, I don't know if you're out to August or where you're at expiration wise, but um, that's an extended stock. Depends on how much time you have left. I gotta go do a, a launch, I'd love to. Yeah, I would, I, that's why I hope it goes well. I hope it goes well and they do a lot of these. Um, you can see it from here if it's at night. I'm on the other side of the state, but uh, boy, I'd, you'd love to be there. You imagine the sound feeling 
Yeah. Uh, any single reason for Chipotle stock to be so expensive? Um, now, you could be asking this in two ways. Now, you could be saying relative to its recent pricing, it's moved up and you feel that that's expensive. Or you could be asking me um, the price of the stock, $1,000. Why do they have $1,000? And that's just because they won't split it. Um, they will at some point, but they just won't split the stock. And I don't think I've ever have split the stock. Uh, but recently, that run-up obviously has to do with the virus. Uh, a lot of the efforts that they've uh, put in place there in terms of being able to pick up your food, the Chipotle lanes, uh, they've converted a lot of stores to that successfully, I would add, uh, from what I've gathered. So I'm not sure 100% the question, but I hopefully answered both of them. Um, oh, Harry's you taking a bet there. You think, you, think, you think Tesla goes up 10% on a launch? All right, Harry's got a bet. Let's see if Harry's right. We're going to find out. I love it. Cool, cool. And last question there, what about GE? Any promise? Good sign that it went up today. They're obviously in the middle of a long-term restructuring plan uh, that, uh, from what I can tell, is going well. The virus was not good for them. They were doing well, and then the virus hit, and it was like, oh, gosh, why are you beating on a, a bad, you know, they're trying to do their thing, and they got beaten down. Um, I don't know that I would be rushing to go buy the stock. This would be, as they would say on... Uh, Bloomberg or something or CNBC, they would say uh, it's a nibble, right? You might nibble a little bit down here. You don't need to bet the farm. You don't need to go full in. You don't need to be overweight or whatever they say. Uh, but you, you you might nibble. How can you argue with nibbling on something at six bucks that was almost 14 before the virus? Yeah. All right, I'll wrap it up there. I appreciate you guys stopping by, hanging out with us. A new new closing beat coming. It's coming. I keep saying that. Once we figure out the buttons and everything, it's coming. New closing beat headed your way, maybe, maybe by the end of the week. So hang in there. I uh, appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Have a great rest of your day and uh, enjoy. Check us out at jazzwealth.com and subscribe button, all that stuff I'm supposed to say. I don't feel like it today. Just thanks for watching. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new FinTips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.